the most powerful church in whole Europe. The Kingdom Church presents Bishop Climate Ministries A place where the captives are set free and where the members are wealthy, healthy, and wise. Your breakthrough is now. But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Join the vision and be free. So the trials we're talking about here, we're talking about crisis. Here we are not talking about temptation, temptation, for example, of things seen. No, 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 no. That's not what it talks about. We need to understand the proper Greek word for this word. You know. So now when we talk about temptation, Jesus, what was Jesus tempted with? What was he tempted with? See, see, we, we have to be. I want, I want us to see the two words here. It's a very, very interesting. Because, you see, we have misunderstood all those things. Actually, here he's talking about crisis. He's talking about crisis. Now, let's see the same word. The same word, verse 2. Go, go, go into uh, King James. Look at King James. Same word. He's talking about trials. He's talking about crisis. And that's the reason why you begin to see church. The church is not prepared. They have not been prepared. Actually, our fasting, once you get born again, the first thing you are supposed to be taught is how to prepare yourself for crisis. So when the crisis comes, you know how to deal with it. But we are not prepared for it. We have just been told, and as soon as you get born again, crisis come, then you start thinking, God has forsaken you. You don't understand why. I cannot make it. I cannot pray. I don't feel like praying. And then at the end of the day, we have all, and then you will bring all that crisis to church again. And when I got born again, I gave you a testimony how I wanted to be able to commit suicide. Not for the first time, second time. That's when I begin to realize that. For two years, I begin to study to be able to realize that uh, I need to prepare myself to deal with crisis. But you see, we don't like hearing that story. And I can see even the way you're looking at me with your face. I, I can see Bishop, I say, we are here, we love you, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you know, and we talk about money is coming. <laughs> can we talk about good houses are coming, Rano Bishop? Bishop, can we just talk about, and actually I had that for you today, this afternoon. Someone said, but, uh, but what will happen, for example, when the money comes and then there, there is a, a financial meltdown, how are you going to deal with it? What was going to happen, for example, when we preach about husband coming, wife coming, and they come, and then your outlaws, call, uh, they cook a crisis? <laughs> or an intruder? Talk to me now. I have seen people. Oh, my God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. I haven't have graduated. Oh, I've got a new job. La, 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 la. As soon as you sit there, you realize it is not a normal seat. It is a seat full of thorns and nails. Your health goes down, everything goes down. People will threaten you. You will face that. Any job that you have, whatever it is, there will be time when everything's going to be good. And there's time when crisis will come. Come on, clap your hands right now. At least that makes me feel better. Now clap for Jesus now. That's why, that's why for me, when I see any crisis, you know, it doesn't bother me. Because already I know it should come. And I, I'm going to be able to deal with it. And afterwards, I'm coming out of this situation much more better than how I was before. Now, look at this now. Let, let's do it interchangeably. I want to show you something. Are, are we ready now? Oh, okay. Let, let's look at this now. Uh, let's read together. One, two, three. My brethren, count it what? When you fall into diverse what? The problem with this, the problem with this scripture, Pastor Edward, is one word. Fall. As soon as you read the word fall, you don't realize that is an old 
English word which means enter. But it's a collective word which means you enter into a situation. This actually, it means the word fall there does not mean actually to fall down, does not mean actually to backslide. It means to fall. It actually means the word enter. So as soon we see the word, watch it, when ye, and this point, when ye fall into diverse temptation, there you are, my God, I've backslidden. How are you doing, sister? Um, uh, I'm doing fine. How are you doing, brother? Hallelujah. No, there's no hallelujah. Amen. Are you praying in tongues? Not now. I, I, I'm backslidden now. I'll pray in tongues after I... <laughs> <laughs> one man made me so happy you know he's, he's, uh, he, 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 uh, he's amazing I said oh you see I says okay I met him and he said oh you know Bishop I'm coming to church I'm backslidden and I'm coming to church uh, in short I am I'm, I'm backslidden now I'm not a Christian what did you do? I, it was something. I will not tell you that somebody's business. It wasn't that something. It's not something serious. But he backslid. Then suddenly, I begin to preach. And while I'm preaching, while he was there, he began to go, Shandala, bakara boko soto lo, bakayaya, waya o shoto lo. So I went next to him and says, Oh, you're praying in tongues and you're still backslid. <laughs> I say, you're praying, I thought you said that you're not a Christian and then you're speaking in our language again. Confusion. It's just doctrinal issue. <laughs> he told me, I, I couldn't help it. I, I just felt the anointing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but watch it now, here we go. Let's look at one, two, three. My brethren, count it all. Now, how can, I call, how can I count it joy when I fall into temptation? But now, the issue here is because we have been preached with the sinners, with the sinners mentality. So, we talk about temptation, we're talking about bad things. We're talking about things that which you have done. Things that are not likable before God's eye and before the church. That's what happened. So, now, that's what, now that's what the issue is. No one has ever told about it, but actually, that has got nothing to do with that. That is talking about crisis. And how do we know that? Here we go. It tells us, verse 3 says, what you know, verse 3 says, knowing that this, that the trine of your faith worketh what? Do you remember I told you about patience this morning? Did you see how everything is connecting? You see how important the fruit of the Spirit is? Okay, now let's read it now with a much more simpler English and we'll try to finish there. And then we'll get to the prophetic hour here in a minute. Uh, NIV, please. Put for me NIV. NIV. Let's look at this now. Watch it now. It's amazing because it will try it. Will, it works what two things: faith and what passion. You remember we dealt with the fruit of the spirit. Uh, do you understand the most important for you? Because what you now says here now, verse one says, verse one says, what you now, uh, verse two please, verse two says, verse two. Consider it pure joy, my brother, whenever you face trial of what many kind. You remember the Bible says Jesus was tempted by the devil for a season. And the devil will keep coming. Once in a while, there's a time when you're going to have to go through good time. Enjoy as much as you can when things are good. Afterwards, then get gears up. Pick up your weapon and get yourself ready again. Then you go through some of those uh, you know, trials. You overcome again. Then you have another holiday. Did you hear what I said? Now watch this says here now. Watch it now, verse 3 says, because, 1, to 3, because you know that the testing of your faith develops what? Which is patient. So, when you, so every trial comes, it is testing your faith. And it you develop what? Patient. So as long as it comes, guess what? You begin to release the fruit of the Spirit. Patient. I'm going to be patient with him. I'm going to be patient with her. I'm going to be patient, especially. You got money with you, cash? Thank you. That's what it. Let me show you something. You never know. Anything to do with money 
it always has to involve another person. Anything to do with money or things will always involve another person. And, for example, can I have the money? How many of you have to be patient for him to, to give it to me? Did, did you see that? <laughs> I have to be what? Patient. I have to be patient. I have to be, yeah, I, I walk, you, you go there, you walk. Then you have to be what? Patient. For the money to come. <laughs> You're buying a house. You have to be what? How long does it take for a house to go through? You can you buy a house today and get it tomorrow? <laughs> you have to be what? Patient. Passion. Passion. Anything that involved another person, relationship, you have to be what? Passion. Because there are some habits you're about to discover, you've never seen them before. You have to be patient with that person. You have to be patient for them to change. You have to be patient for them for God to turn them around. Some say hallelujah. Now watch, the, what, no, no, watch here now. Watch here now. Verse 4 says, and I love this one. Perseverance must what? Finish its work. So that you may be what? Mature and complete. Not what? Lacking anything. Now look at this now. Verse, uh, verse, um, verse uh, uh, Amplified Bible. Did you learn something here today? Someone say help me Jesus. So I need you to deal from today. Get yourself ready. This morning I gave you a formula on how to deal with crisis. So I don't want to hear all those reactions again. I need you to be mature. I need you to be a master of your own destiny. I, I need to hear a good report from you. you. You can handle your life. You can handle your finances. You can handle your marriage. You can handle your relationship. You can handle that big company. You can handle that county, that nation. You, you, can, you can handle it. I said, did you hear what I said? Someone said, hallelujah. Say, I can handle it. Say, I can make it. Now, now, now let, let, let's start from from what you know from verse verse two and we finish here one two three let's read together one two three consider it holy joyful my brother so what, what the bible tells me that anytime when crisis is coming i should not be sad why remember joy remember joy what did you talk about this morning what is one of the things when you have a crisis you're supposed to have so when you have a crisis are you supposed to have a what how is your face supposed to look like You know, you people make me happy. You know what you're saying, Bishop? Sure we like you. We, we, we love this message. But please, for me, all my crises, I bring them to you. <laughs> I can see all of you right now. You're saying, mm -mm. Bishop, thank you. This message is amazing. We like you so much, Bishop. Amen. Praise the Lord. But as long as you are here, I know where to bring my crisis to. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. But I, but I need you to, to handle them. Amen? I'm just trying to, because at the end of the day, there are sometimes you, you know, there are sometimes you may not find me on the phone. Though some of you, you keep your eyes on my WhatsApp. <laughs> you have to see when I'm on, when I'm what? Off. No, because you have a need. I think Bishop, let me text him. There's no issue. I totally understand that. I'm there. That's what I'm there for. Some say hallelujah. And what your verse 2 says, consider it what? Holy joyful. Holy what? Joyful. Now, do you start finding some of these words that we shared this morning? Which was what? Love, joy, peace. Uh huh. Patience. Uh huh. Gentleness, goodness, kindness. Yeah? Self control. Did, did you find them now? We start talking about that. Okay, let's do together one, two, three. Consider it holy, joyful, my brothers. Wherever you are enveloped in, in encounter trials 
or any sort of fall into various what temptation verse 3 says what you know verse 3 says be assured and understand that trials and proving of your faith brings out endurance and steadfastness and brings out brings out brings out brings out that's when patience will be manifested that's when joy will be manifested that's when kindness will be manifested that's when goodness will be manifested and i watch you now verse 4 says uh, let's for one two three but let what endurance steadfastness and patience have full play and do a thorough work so that you may be people perfectly and fully developed with no defect lacking into nothing so what do you mean there are people in life who are fully developed and when you get fully developed then God puts a special crown on you so guess what now God sits down in heaven and he begins to boast about you and he says watch that's my son look what's gonna happen now crisis storm come you sail through the storm heaven he says here we go Satan how do you see that and then after that after every are you ready I'm gonna move prophetically after every storm you conquer God rewards you you always get rewarded for what you conquer You always get rewarded for what you conquer. Then God will reward you. You always get rewarded for what you conquer. As soon as you conquer something, heaven will invest heavenly on you. And then after sometimes, God will allow another crisis to see what are you made of. No wonder why the Bible says he took the children of Israel through the wilderness where the Bible says was so dry in order to be able to test them. And when God is leading you, sometimes you pass you through the wilderness, through dry places. Why is God doing this? It's because it's for a reason, because God loves you and he is proud of you how many of you right now you want to be a perfect businessman huh how many of you right now you want to be a, a perfect a perfect professional you know whatever it is how many of you want to be a perfect husband a perfect wife <laughs> then conquer crisis <laughs> simple when you find a man or a woman who is perfect a perfect person is person who knows how to deal with crisis they're perfect once you know how to overcome every storm and every crisis in a relationship you, no one can dispose you did you hear what I said Huh? Did you hear what I say? No one can do what? No one will dispose you. You become non disposable. <laughs> in the working place, in your company, when you become somebody who is only solving the crisis, there's no situation that you cannot deal with. Who do you think is going to dispose you? Have you ever heard about perfect people? They do exist perfect people are people who knows how not the one that are looking for dots the one that have learned through experience who have learned to embrace knowing that actually trials is what you makes them when they go through trials they add more experience they become more better than ever before and listen to me let endurance steadiness the patient have fully play and and the through work so that maybe people perfectly fully developed there are people that are fully developed as business people fully developed a politician fully developed as, 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 as professionals fully developed as a husband as a wife fully developed with no defects lacking in nothing lacking in nothing because you know why they lack in nothing because you know why they're lacking nothing because there is no amount of challenge that's going to make them to run no amount of issue is gonna they are i'm telling you those people are not this they, they are not disposable it's difficult you, you take that place in life anybody will pay any price because there's never there's never a challenge there's never but some of you right now you are the crisis
You are the crisis. So you just, somebody wants just to dispose you as quick as possible. They want to dispose you from your job. They want to dispose you right now from your position. They want to dispose you from any relationship. Because you're what? A liability. Did you learn something here today? Turn to your neighbor, say neighbor. I'm not disposable. Amen. Did you learn something here today? Come on, give Jesus a man of praise for now. So, tomorrow when you go out there, when you hear there is a crisis at work, begin to laugh. When you see some people behaving like monkeys around you, laugh. When you hear, sometimes we have what we call the internet. Ladies on Fire Ministry invites you to Catch the Fire 2017. Catch the fire to be a movable rock, a fire pot, a flaming torch. Do not miss. Hosted by Dr. Jennifer and Archbishop Climus Urungu. We have a dynamic guest speakers, Reverend Muru from Kenya and Bishop Anka Budi from the UK. Saturday, special girls talk at 2 p.m. Girls talk, real talk, reviving marriages and preparing singles not to be missed with Dr. Jennifer and Bishop Climate and also guest live performers Minister Rebecca and also performing live the PKs, TKC Mass Choir and Anna Model. For more information visit www.ladiesonfire.org at TKC 93 Camberwell Station Road SE5 9JJ or you can call us on 0207-738-3476 or 0207-733-83668. Do you believe in miracles? The following program contains testimonies of true stories by people who have received divine healing and miracles through the ministry of Bishop Climate. They gave these voluntary without any directions from the Kingdom Church. We advise that you always seek medical practitioner's advice before making any decision based on this program. Thank you. Yesterday I was prayed for, and uh, this morning when I went to go take my bath, I actually coughed this out. I don't know, it's kind of strange, but I've never seen it before. So I, I have the picture over here. It's kind of disgusting, but I just had to show it because it's different. Yesterday I called you for prophecy. And I begin to prophesy into your life when we were breaking. Even there was the lady who was here before and even she referred to you, one of the pastor. Referred to you because when I was prophesying to you, actually it's a sieve also I was talking to her life. And that's one of the things that we need to understand. The Bible says, you see, the prophecy is given for all. So when you begin to hear somebody else being prophesied, sometimes we need one as a point of contact and for you to receive. So when you hear somebody being prophesied, you need to say, I believe I receive. You stretch up your hands and, and don't become judgmental and asking, oh my God, he, he, what's going around with that? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I didn't know that. Now I know. Now, this is amazing. So after that prophecy and also you were done deliverance there. You know, and I remember, you know, uh, you know, you, you went, you went down under the anointing, and the woman of God actually was uh, I directed her to be able to do deliverance on you. you. You know, you know, this is amazing. Look, you've never had anything like this. Look what she vomited. Look at it. Look at it. I want you to zoom it in. So watch it. Look at that. Look what. Look, that's what she vomited. Early in the morning. Look at that. Jordan has been cut off. 
Now you can go back to America. You either go back to America or move and live in London. Somebody say hallelujah. But now you can go back to America. Now you can go back to America. When you go back to America, no more. No more flooding into your destiny. Whatever has been flooding, every time carrying all the way to the Dead Sea, that is the spirit of dead, is already gone. Give Jesus a might and a praise one more time. Yeah, praise God, Archbishop. Uh -huh. Yeah, this lady is one of our partners. And she was here this morning to see you. She said for five years, she's not been sleeping at all. But today, as she came here and as we've spoken to her, she came with a very heavy heart. But after speaking with her and after her enjoying the service today, that spirit of heaviness has been lifted up. And she believes that when she goes, she's going to sleep like a baby. So she's here to thank God for your life. Stand up right now. She came to see me for the word of prophecy. Lift up your hands right now. Jesus from to now look at my eyes from today I command you the Bible says in the book of Psalms 127 that God gives a good night's sleep to whom that he loves God loves you he loves you he loves you he now look at me he loves you and right now from today I command you to sleep like a baby I command you to sleep like a baby I declare peace Thank you for watching Bishop Climate TV. I know you have been blessed. Here are four ways you can connect to the prophet today. One, call now, 4420-8114-9390 for prayer. Two, come during free prophetic hour and meet the man of God personally. Every Sunday between nine to 10 a.m. No appointment needed. Three, attend our powerful miracle services, Friday, 7.30 p.m., Sunday at 11 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. And four, visit our website, www.bishopclimate.org, or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Bishop Climate Ministries, a place where the captives are set free.